When I started doing research online for this talk, I came across the college's mission statement, and I found this really great line that I wanted to start by sharing with you today. An education at Williams should not be regarded as a privilege destined to create further privilege, but as a privilege that creates opportunities to serve society at large and imposes the responsibility to do so. And I think that this line speaks a great deal to the importance of this session, which, as you know, is called, What Difference Will We Make? Now, of course, there are hundreds of different ways to answer this question, but I want to focus on just one. 50 years down the road, what will Williams's relationship with North Adams and the Berkshires look like? And I think that in order to answer this question, we first need to think about what it looks like today. So here's Williams in Williamstown. Five minutes down the road is North Adams. Another 10, 15 minutes down the road is Adams. I want to focus mostly on North Adams since it's so close to us. If you look at the percent below the poverty line, in Williamstown, that number is about 3%, so pretty low. But in North Adams, it's 17%, so almost one in five. If you look at another key statistic, which is the percent of children below the poverty line, Williamstown, still just 3%. But in North Adams, the contrast is even more striking, 23%. So that's almost one in four children below the poverty line, just five minutes down the road. And Williams' ties to this region go beyond just location, because the college is one of the largest employers in the region, and most of our employees don't actually live in Williamstown. They live in North Adams and Adams and in these surrounding communities. So that's what the landscape looks like. And now I want to share with you a few examples of really meaningful engagement that the college and the students do in the community today. The first is our work in local schools. There's a really incredible breadth and depth of engagement going on here. Sports teams are going to the elementary schools and playing with students during recess. Williams students are writing iPad apps to help fourth and fifth graders learn science. And of course, there's tutoring and mentoring and TAing happening in the classroom at all grade levels to help out the teachers at these local schools. One of the local education projects that I wanted to talk to you about in particular is something that I've been very involved in, which is a public speaking outreach program. We use high energy activities to help students in elementary and middle school build confidence and get over their fear of public speaking. Now we started really small, just one class at one school, and it really just took off from there. Teachers love it because it fits right into their curriculum and it helps them meet the state standards. The kids love it because the lessons are a lot of fun. And the Williams students doing the teaching love it because they get to see these incredible transformations, like the shyest student in the room becoming the first to volunteer to speak in front of the group, sometimes in just one session. And in the two years that we've been running this program, it's grown to 20 Williams students teaching public speaking to nearly 1,000 local students in six schools. And I think this is a really great example of what Williams and its students are uniquely positioned to do in two ways. First, everyone who gets in here has something to share, whether that's music or art or sports. And sharing these talents with local students gives them access to enrichment opportunities that they wouldn't otherwise encounter. And second, this becomes a learning experience on both ends. The kids learn how to give a speech or write a play or play a sport. And the Williams students doing the teaching gain a deeper understanding of their subject. And they become better athletes or artists or speakers. Now, in addition to all this work in local schools, there's a lot of other really great work going on as well. Williams students are helping local residents file their income taxes. They're volunteering at Sweetbrook, the local nursing home. They're mentoring at-risk youth at the Berkshire Farm Center, and they're driving extra food from the dining halls to local food banks. And this is just a smattering of what Williams done, does today. But lately, the question has arisen, how can we do more to build on what we're already doing for the community? And that's also the theme of this talk. Looking down the road 50 years, what should Williams' relationship with North Adams and the Berkshires look like? And I think that our goal going forward should be that 100% of Williams students leave here with some kind of significant experience engaging with the community, even if that just happens once. Right now, we don't really have any hard numbers about how many students get to take part in this kind of work. But there is a first year orientation program called Where Am I that's designed to give students kind of a broad exposure to the different ways they can get involved. About a quarter of the freshman class does Where Am I, which is a great start. But our goal really should be 100%, whether that's through Where Am I or through some other opportunity down the road. 
So the question we should be asking ourselves going forward is, how can we make it as easy as possible to get off campus and into the surrounding community? And of course, there are a lot of really concrete logistical things we can do to strengthen our engagement programs. And I want to give just one example of that. Transportation is a huge challenge in a rural area, because it's not like a city where you can just hop on a bus or get on the subway. You have to drive to get anything done. And for a long time, what students have done is used their own car or used a college car to get to wherever it is that they're going, which is really inefficient and really unsustainable. So this past January, the college set up a bus line to connect Williamstown and the North Adams downtown. So not a long distance, but it's very frequent, every 30 minutes. And the results were really astounding. First month of the service in January, 800 students rode the bus, so really good. Second month, February, classes had started, students were more busy. The numbers actually stayed that high. They stayed at 800. And what this bus line made it easier to do was to work at Greylock Elementary and Brayton Elementary, which are two really high need schools in North Adams, which previously could only be reached by car. And if you look at the raw numbers of students working in these local schools, Williamstown Elementary has way more students working there than probably all the other schools combined, and Williamstown Elementary is walking distance from campus. Transportation seems like such a simple thing, but it makes a really significant difference. And I think the lesson that we can take away from all this is that the more barriers from going out and doing community engagement are lowered, the more of these types of engagement will happen. So that's one big challenge going forward, making getting off campus and into the surrounding community as frictionless as possible. Another big challenge is a cultural one. There's an attitude on campus towards Williamstown as sort of a stepping stone between where your childhood grow, home where you grow up and wherever you're going to settle down after you graduate. And I think this is also particularly evident in this notion of the purple bubble, which is a source of great pride. And in many ways it should be, because Williams is a great place to live and learn for four years. But it also doesn't exist in a vacuum, and it has deep ties to the communities that surround it. Williams is such a vibrant and dynamic place that it's really easy to forget that just a few footsteps outside this purple bubble is a world very different from Williams, very different from Williamstown. Right now, it's a little too easy to go through four years and have your only real exposure to our neighbors be trips to Walmart and stop and shop. This isn't a problem that I have an easy solution for, but it's a question that we need to be asking ourselves when we're considering the future of Williams. How can we make students really engaged in this community and really invested in its well-being? So that's where we are today, looking forward. And I think that the burden lies equally on the college and on the students to make this vision of 100% engagement a reality. The college has to work to provide the resources to lower the barriers to make getting off campus and doing community engagement as easy as possible. And the students really have to be invested in the Berkshire community. I think as a result, we'll leave here with a broader worldview, a greater commitment to social justice, and a deeper connection to this really incredible place where we've spent four years. I think students will also take the skills they learn engaging with the Berkshire community onto the communities they go on to inhabit after they graduate. Now, it's really easy to think of community service as a one-way exchange or as an act of charity. But I don't think that's true, because when we say community engagement, we really mean engagement with one another. Whether you're teaching public speaking or science, tutoring or mentoring, volunteering at the nursing home or the food bank, doing this work means being exposed to a broader variety of perspectives than you could ever get staying on campus. And it means taking what you learn at Williams and applying it to the real world. So going forward, the types of engagement that the college should be working to foster are the ones that encourage this two-way exchange, matching a student talent to a community need. Part of being a good citizen is for Williams and its students to keep an eye out for our neighbors, not just because the college is a large employer, but because at the end of the day, we're all just sharing this little part of the planet. And the issues that affect our neighbors in North Adams affect us as well, even if we're just here for four years. Now, since this weekend is honoring Jack Sawyer's legacy, I want to close with something that he said in 1962. 
The presence of the college in a New England town offers a range of opportunities for the college and its students to relate to the town and county, which adds a good deal of meaning to their common existence. These situations add a dimension of contact with reality that enlargens and deepens the lives of many. That was 50 years ago, and I think it's still incredibly relevant today. So that's what I'll leave you with this afternoon, looking ahead 50 years. Thank you. <laughs>